Well, welcome everyone. Uh, it is my first time doing a webinar, so uh, it might not be uh, perfect, but I always aim uh, to be as close to perfection as possible. Um, thank you for writing who is a uh, home inspector and some uh, and who is a realtor or homeowner. That's a class that I want to have uh, for uh, everyone. Uh, mainly for realtors, but everyone can have some can get some tips from here and uh, hopefully apply them to real life. Um, so, as a uh, home inspectors, you can uh, maybe keep some notes for things you might apply in your business. Um, and I will ask with one uh, one like question. So, what did you study? as kids, what was your major? Um, for some could be biology, chemistry, math, uh, that uh, they wanted to follow, they wanted to be instructors, mathematicians, who knows. Um, but, but looking where you are now, we are all sitting in this room and you know where life brought you. Um, did you follow what you studied? Did you follow what you needed? Did you become a home inspector because that's what you wanted always. Some yes, some no. Um, but I, I'm from I'm from Greece, and uh, allow me to bring Socrates as a, as an example. He was a philosopher, and he said one thing that I love. He said, "I know one thing that I know nothing." And what does that mean? Um, that whatever I do, I go with the mindset that. I don't know anything. And what that allows me to do is to learn new things. So here we are, this webinar, we aim it to be a real life tool uh, for the inspectors, but for realtors mainly, but um, as I said, everybody can learn. And hopefully we will get some education altogether. Um, and from that education that I may transfer to you, then you can actually educate your realtors, your inspectors, your family. Um, this is my view. And, you know, maybe another inspector in another state not do the things or the way that I do it. So that's perfectly fine. There is no right or wrong. Um, Feel free to keep notes and I would love to ask any questions of yours in the end, just because I like to have a process. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so let's dive into the decoding a home inspection report. <clears throat> all right. So first of all, who am I? Like, who is this guy with a thick accent that is here to teach you, right? Uh, <laughs> Well, I I am, uh, as I said, from Greece. Uh, I was born in Athens and I met my wife that she's from Athens too, but Athens, Georgia, not Athens, Greece. Um, it's a nice thing though that uh, we have, uh, we started with something common for when we first met, <laughs> icebreaker. But um, then I went from uh, construction to home inspections. I came in USA in 2012. And actually as of last year, I have my dual citizenship. Um, but um, I went uh, to construction uh, management. Uh, I got my construction management degree. And then I was working in construction at the same time. And from that, my boss was like, ah, you annoy me. Uh, because we were going for one project. And I was like, but that's wrong. And that's wrong. From what we learned, that's wrong too. Did you say something to the owner? Maybe, you know, you can get more business. So he's like, you know what? You need to become a home inspector. How, that's how I started. I was working under someone else. And after that, I opened my own um, Owl's Eye Home Inspections. So yeah, with all these, I have like eight and a half uh, years of experience. And after that, I became a certified master inspector by Internazi. I really think that I owe a lot to Internazi because I learned everything. Um, and the continuous education is perfect. 
for some certified master inspector is just a title um i don't say it like uh something that you all have to be uh for me it actually i saw that it shows some credibility to the realtors to the owners that they call me and they want an inspection and i say hey what what it means what that title means to you is that i have at least 1000 inspections under my tool belt that means i have some kind of experience because let's be real what they see our face as inspectors only when we arrive to the property sometimes they see our uh, our uh, <laughs> Uh, website and they see who we are and how we look like but other than that they probably just call us and they say okay arrive that day that time and we'll we'll see you there so it's nice to give them some kind of uh, backstory of who you are and why you are good for them keep that in mind um you can talk to them about experience you can talk to them about uh uh, the certified master inspector is something that makes you unique. Now, let's uh, let's continue just so you could have a backstory. That's what I wanted. Okay, so what to expect from a home inspector? And as I saw here, you are a lot of you are already inspectors. So um, we want to give the minimum, right? But the minimum should be the best so the minimum should be the best standards that you can provide um you don't want to give uh, to them uh, to um, to know that you are not experienced you 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 are new you might be new but you still can be good because you learned your things you 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 went to your classes you did your uh, um, inspections so you want to explain all these um, now as I said this PowerPoint is uh, mainly for uh, like uh, the realtors so I want to explain um, how do you, how do they find a great home inspector uh, how do they judge to see a, a home inspector if he's good not uh, and before we dive into the uh, to decode the report Allow me to explain a few things that I at least apply and maybe it can help you as, as uh, home inspectors uh, or as a realtor to know what you want to look for. All right. So I know, I know you can be shh about it, but we, we all know that some uh, realtors call some of the inspectors deal killers. But what is a deal killer? Uh, is it the one that just does a good job? Is it the one that does too good job, too good of a job, um, too thorough? But but what are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be detailed. We're supposed to be honest. And that's what you want from your inspector. Thorough inspection is important for you. As uh, realtors, as homeowners, as my clients, as you, everybody, uh, every inspector's clients, um, detailed report is even more um, important to me, at least. Um, if we miss deficiencies, there is a problem, right? Of course, you don't want to miss deficiencies. But if we cannot communicate the deficiencies we did find, properly to the clients, um, then there is a big problem again. We need to find that fine line and walk on that line. It can be um, the difference between like ignorance and knowledge or not caring enough to, to mention something or to be too scary with what we say it's not only only what you find it's how you communicate that to your uh, clients realtors everybody um so how, how how do we do that how do we walk to that fine line well let's see two two ways we have the verbal and the written you need to find out is the 
things that the inspector can do well and you know that okay this is a good inspector um does he prepare the client on the phone uh when uh, the client first calls and says um hey i want an inspection okay well this is what's included with my inspection and this is what's not included information that's very important i also give 30 minutes on average um after the inspection and i explain to the client that is there my major findings things that could be very important for him his safety or his pocket <laughs> um if they are not there i might call them on the way to the office and be like hey i'm done with the inspection um can uh, can i tell you what uh, what i found so things like that will make uh, the realtors trust you the realtors will be happy the clients will be happy because they know what's going on. You keep them updated. Um, and then you have the written. The written is, of course, the report. But is the report going to be delivered the same day? Did we say that the, in the beginning when we talk with the client? Um, is the report uh, detailed? Like, uh, do you have uh, different sections? Do you not have different sections and just uh, say, I will only report the major things? You know, I don't do that. I, I try to be detailed, to be honest. Some people like that. Some people not. Uh, my clients so far are super happy. <laughs> so, and key for those, by saying detailed in a report, I, do, I, I don't mean that you have to write an essay for every deficiency, but uh, short sentences is a key. I don't see, um, I don't see us really need a full paragraph until something is connected with something else. That interior wall with, uh, uh, with show a stain or a discoloration and what's going on? Should we check the exterior? Oh, we check the exterior. Is it a flashing? Is it something wrong? Then you might need to explain more. Um, but that's the only time that I think you need to write more than two sentences. And again, that's what I believe. Now, <clears throat> let me give you a real life example. Someone called um called me and he told me that he had an inspector and that inspector uh, reports um, that he reported that he found moisture in the basement that he found all this uh, uh, effluence and discoloration and uh, all the levels of the moisture being excessive and things like that where did he go wrong he didn't put any illustrations no pictures no videos no nothing the homeowner goes there he doesn't see anything he calls uh, contractors they don't see anything so i wasn't there i didn't go um to see if there was an issue or not but from that i grabbed this and i remember it now that you have to have illustrations. You have to show and support what you say. It's visual and it's easy for them to, um, to see and clarify what, what are you talking about. Um, so communication again, that's very important. <clears throat> um, now, another uh, factor is that you have to be unbiased to um give just just the facts and sometimes sometimes this means that you have to eliminate emotions as sympathetic as we want to be uh to the client because he might really want that house but we might find an issue then we might need to eliminate emotions and say all right so these are the this is the problem and this is uh, this is what i have to report and uh, i understand your pain but i can't do anything because they will ask you there will be one or two that will ask you can you change what you write in the report especially coming from realtors 
It happened to me more than two times, <laughs> but it happened to me. Um, and the answer is no. Um, we are there to observe and report. All right. Now, full service uh, is another thing. You, the more you give to the realtors and the clients, the more happy they are and the more happy you are. But, uh, you know, you become your one-stop shop. Uh, home inspection, radon test, sewer, uh, mold, and uh, air quality. All of these will, uh, will help you show that you are there for your client no matter what. So the more you learn, the more you can apply in your business and the more business you will get. But also as uh, realtors, you know that you found a, a, a great inspector, not only of how thorough he is and how detailed his report is, but how good can he do the whole services? How much can he provide to your client? Um, so... Follow-up and availability. All right. To me, one of the most important things, because a lot of people are nine to five guys and they disappear. And actually the client is scared after reading the report and after work, let's say, they go home, they read the report, they're scared. Done. So I try to be 10, 11 o'clock. It's 10 minutes to send an answer and that's it. They go to sleep happy and everybody's happy. And last uh, here for this list, uh, it's not ethical to do work to the houses that you inspect. That's a big conversation. To me, it's not ethical. Uh, I cannot go and say, ah, your plumbing is bad. Um, it's 300 more and I can fix it. Except if you have start having uh, different companies with different, like you get into too much. But as a home inspector, as I was at home inspections, I cannot come and do work. Uh, but we have network. A network that uh, we have people that we work together all the time. We, we trust. We... Um, we really put our name out there when I refer this, these people to my clients. So do you want a plumber? Okay, you know what? I have someone that I know that he's doing a great job. I don't know his pricing. He might be expensive for you, but I know that he's doing a good job. And that makes realtors happy. That makes uh, the clients happy. And of course, that makes me happy. So inspectors is ideal to have not any, but great trusted connections. All right. Now, sorry, as I said, I'm, I'm Greek. I will throw some Greek on you. And uh, Zenon, Zeno, as you might know him, uh, he was a Greek philosopher that he, that he said, we have two ears and one mouth. So we should uh, listen more than, uh, than we say. And that's kind of funny because I say that to you while you are listening and I'm the one that is talking, okay? But <laughs> this, is, uh, this is very important. Why? Because now we go to the really important things. Uh, the most important part of this webinar for uh, all the agents, uh, the realtors, the uh, clients, the inspectors, um, when they receive the client's uh, 50 pages of uh, inspection, 50, 800, <laughs> and 800, I'm sorry, 80 pages, um, they are overwhelmed. Uh, the reports might be really overwhelmed. So um, then the clients are stressed, they make their realtors stressed, and the realtors put pressure on us. So softwares have uh, links now for online report. Uh, and that looks better, but still the PDF version can be pretty bad because you might have one picture in one uh, page and that's it. So yeah, you have 50 pages, but 10 of them might be pretty much nothing and we can't do anything as home inspectors because it's the software. But in the end of the day, everything will fall in place as long as we use 
easy words and explain uh, like like we talk to little kids with with respect, of course, but to explain to them what we found, what's the issue, and that is where we're going now. That's why you all came here. All right. So what does it mean? These are words that you see in the report. These are words that the inspector use, uh, the inspectors use, and uh, and some uh, some of these are very important, but may be blend in there in the report. Um, and uh, especially when you have fifty to eighty pages, you might skip something as uh, a client, as a realtor. So you want you want to pay attention to these, but also you want to understand what do they mean because they will be repeated again and again and again so i will try to translate them for you um and yeah let's dive to see what do they really mean all right so let's say that some uh, the, that an inspector says uh, there is adequate or inadequate uh, insulation on in the attic what does that mean it means that uh in the attic you might have enough or not enough insulation um usually with a um, not enough might be a problem and there is a recommendation i recommend you or uh, to to add some insulation but um the airflow in a closet when the hvac is uh, in a closet you might uh, see that it doesn't have enough airflow there you can use that word so as a realtor and as a client that's what you want to read uh enough or not enough pretty much more is needed um now and again some people might be like oh no i don't say that word and i am one of those uh i don't say the m Word, word substance growth you can have any other thing but not not mold in the report why yes we see it we it might be mold yes but not only it's liability but it's also educational educational issue for us to say that it's something without having tested it and got lab results okay uh it's mold yeah what kind of mold how dangerous um how was it there uh how to solve the issue all these are questions that you can answer for you from your experience as home inspector but in the report in order to use the word mold i strongly suggest you to have it tested and know exactly like details of what kind and what is it and things like that. So when you see in the in the report substance growth, that kind of means mold. Some they say discoloration, some they say growth, things like that. So that's very important. Now hydrostatic, <clears throat> sorry, can't talk. Hydrostatic pressure. Uh, I don't have it. Uh, I don't usually uh, use it in the report. I, If I do, I put it in parentheses because again, I try to talk to the clients as uh, like little kids. I try to explain. If I say to them hydrostatic pressure, they will be like, okay, what's that? They're not professionals. They're there to, they're ne there to just hire us and listen to us what we have to say. So, so I start to to explain, you know, that's when the soil pressure uh, is on uh, the foundation of your house and uh, that crack that we see there probably is connected to that. And, and once you start explaining, they're like, oh, okay. So save yourselves as home inspectors um, and also as realtors, now you know, <laughs> you can... Um, I write in the report as uh, like 
simple words of what the problem is and not the actual technical word. Saves uh, time later for questions and also explains better. Um, all right. <clears throat> this is a very important thing. In the report, you will uh, see past tense. You will see at the time of inspection, um, observed, appeared, was. I don't say I see now. I don't say uh, there is now. Why? Because who knows uh, how many people went to that property after I left? Who knows what will happen after I left? There are contractors, other buyers, agents, sellers, movers, uh, things that happen either way. Let's say that we have cold weather and after I leave something burst and boom, you have a leak. So at the time of inspection, I saw this, I saw that. Past tense. It's important. Keep that in, in mind. I saw that you, we have some new inspectors here. Keep that in mind. It's very important. Uh, realtors, please, uh, now you understand why the past tense. <laughs> so, discoloration or deterioration. Well, that's evidence of an issue. Let me say this. Sometimes I've been asked uh, on the phone, like we arrange an inspection and they call me and they say, hey, George, like, should we cancel the inspection because it's a rainy day? You won't be able to go to the roof to, to inspect it. Uh, let me see if, you're, if, if we take a minute, would you mind writing on the chat? Should we skip an inspection in a rainy day? Yes or no? I will just give you like 30 seconds to see if I, I'd like some interaction here. All right, there we are. See, you don't need me. Ah, we got a yes. No, all right. So uh, again, I guess that is not right or wrong. Um, but keep that in mind. I will give you a different perspective. Uh, what Preston said, exactly. So um, let's say that uh, it's a sunny day and I go to the attic and uh, I will see a stain. I will see a discoloration. I will put my moisture meter there. It's dry. What will I write in the report? I will go in the report and I will say, Okay, hey, I saw that and I put my moisture meter and it's dry at time of the inspection, right? Okay, the next day, let's say, they will close, they will go to the house, starts raining, there is a leak. Hmm. Let's take the other way around. Let's say that uh, we, we go on a rainy day. It's true, I won't be able to walk on the roof. I won't be able to fly the drone. But what will I be able to see? Active leaks. If something is active, I will get it. I will catch it. And that's really important. Um, I can go another day really quick and see if the singles, how they look from the outside. Like I don't have to have access to the house, right? I can arrange again and go on the top. But the main thing is that I went to the attic in a rainy day and I didn't find any leaks. In the report, I also would write that I did not inspect the singles or the roof on the exterior because of the weather. High winds, uh, snow, rain, all this count, okay? As long as we report it, we have to report everything that we inspect or we do not inspect and why, why we did not inspect it. So, discoloration, deterioration, um, it can be, as I said, evidence, or it can be something active that I see. Discoloration will be something like a stain, and deterioration would be something that it's broken, something that it's uh, damaged, right? 
Um, thank you for participating in the chat. I like that. Now, suspect. I know a lot of inspectors will uh, say now that suspect actually is not recommended for inspection reports, but in, ri in, uh, in real life, there is, there is uh, a point that you can actually use it. Now, why it's not allowed? Because usually you are there to, as we said, observe and report, not to suspect. You cannot imagine, you cannot uh, assume things. But there is a point that only like with evidence of like two plus points, uh, you can make connections. Let's say, okay, let's say that um, inspection is like a puzzle that we put together all the pieces, right? So we go to inspect an, uh, a wall and we see a, a stain, discoloration. Is it wet? Yes. Okay, why? What happened there? Is there a line in behind the drywall uh, that runs and leaks? Is it uh, is it uh, on uh, near the window and there is a flashing that it's leaking? Um, so you go to the interior, you check, click. Okay. You go to the exterior, you check, click. Okay. Hmm. You go to the attic. Might be the at least here in Georgia we have them. Uh, the um, the furnace up there um, in the attic. So maybe that's leaking and it goes in the behind the drywall and you see the stain in one spot on the on the drywall on the wall. So all these you have to not just see one area, you have to see all the surrounding area and figure out where is it coming from. A lot of times you can, a lot of times you can't. And if I go in the interior wall and I say a stain, but on the exterior I see that it's missing either the flashing or some or there is a gap, then I will put both in the report and I will say, I found this stain that it's wet and excessive moisture or so or something. And then this is the view on the exterior, suspect connection. Then you in my opinion, at least, you are allowed to say you suspect that. But of course, you have to recommend further review, evaluation, and you know, repair as needed by a licensed contractor. Now, we go to the last one. Review, repair, replace by a licensed contractor or qualified contractor. In a lot of situations, a home inspector has to be either licensed or certified. Um, if you are not, uh, if you if you are in Georgia, the home inspectors uh, they are not expected to be licensed. They don't need to. They are not required. But that's why we go through internatio. We get our certificate, and we become master inspectors. And we, in general, we try to provide information to the clients and the realtors that, hey, we know what we are doing. Well, similar to that, I cannot suggest a handyman that he just knows things to go to repair something in a house that I inspect. I recommend a licensed contractor. I recommend a licensed roofer, a licensed li plumber, uh, someone that can support his uh, repairs and have liability and someone that he will not disappear um, after he repairs something and do a handyman job, meaning a non-professional job of, oh, it works, it works. That it's not technically correct, but practically it works. I don't like that. I want everything to, re to be right. So... These are the main things that you will see in a report. I know that I might skip some, but uh, also we have limited time here. So these are the main things that you will see as a realtor in the report again and again. And especially when you use the same home inspector, it's good to know what, what exactly does he mean with what he says and what he writes. 
uh, and make it easy for you and your client when they call you and they ask, hey, like, what does he mean there? Um, so I will have a couple of things to say, a few more things to say, and then uh, we will be done. But um, key sections of the report. Again, not all the inspectors around US will have the same categories. I think that most do, but keep in mind, we are not all uh, in the same pod. We are not doing the same thing and we do not uh, use the same softwares either way. All right. I will start with the summary. In my report, the summary is listed last. Um, but it's something that I recommend verbally to uh, the realtor and to the client that uses me to read first. Um, it's like a blurb, like a summary on the back of the book that explains the plot and makes, uh, makes you buy the book or not. Um, that's what my summary is. Uh, by listing the summary last also motivates hopefully the clients to review the whole report until they reach the summary. Um, but it's the most important things that I found. Now follow because we have a few things here to say. Um, first of all, my report goes as I go, like uh, roof, exterior, interior, attic, and, and things like that. Um, but then it splits to major, minor, and tips. The major are the most important issues, deficiencies, things that I see per inspector, per me, because the client might consider something else important. For example, I go to the crawl space and I find substance, a growth. Uh, yeah, that M word that we don't say, mold. <laughs> Uh, everywhere in the crawl space. Well, some will say, this is the house I want. I don't care. I will spend 10K, 10,000 extra to fix it. Some will walk away. They will be like, no, I don't deal with that. I have it in the summary. I have it in the major. I have it like, hey, this is a health issue. This is a problem. This is expensive too. For some though, it's not. For some, they're like, no, nope, I don't care. So again, the major are important issues per inspector. Um, it's all in the eye of the beholder um, and his pocket a lot of times. <laughs> now, minor things, I put them there because uh, also it eliminates uh, questions. It, uh, I say, you see that patch, you see that uh, dry stain in the uh, in the kitchen ceiling? Well, I saw it too, and it's dry. I put my moisture meter, it's dry. Nothing to worry, but I want you to know that I saw it. It's there, it's in the report. Instead of them calling me when they move in and they say, hey, you didn't say anything about the patch. Is it a problem? Can you come back to see it? What's going on? Great communication is a key. Um, and then you have the tips that it's tips, uh, you know, uh, for, for, for maintenance, uh, some, uh, sealant cooking around windows, uh, openings, things like that. And after you pay uh, the client purchase the, the house, they will know that, oh, okay, I can go to my report and see a list of things that, uh, I can do to maintain my house yearly. And I like to provide that to my clients. Takes more time, but when they leave that nice five-star review, <laughs> you know that you did the right thing. Um, and last but not least, privacy. I talked earlier about the softwares that all the inspectors might use different uh, softwares. 
privacy is something very important to me and it should be to you as a realtor, to you as an inspector, to you as a homeowner, seller, buyer, to everyone. Um, how much uh, an inspector cares about uh, you as, a, as the client or the realtor and the safety um, and your safety is very important. Um, how how would you all feel here, for example, if I get the email or your login information and um, I sell them or I give them to someone else that can use them to sell your stuff? That's exactly what's happening with a lot of softwares. They take the information that we type in, their, the client's email, name, phone number, Sometimes even credit card stuff, that's why you have to have really good, secure uh, protocols. Uh, and what do they do? They take them and either they use them to call the our, our clients for uh, to sell stuff like uh, internet connection, uh, security programs, uh, warranties and things like that. Or they sell them to other companies and then they get money. There are some inspectors that they know these things and from those inspectors some that they care and some that they don't i care I, I, that's why the software that i use i made sure from the beginning to ask and the owner said that he does not give any information they are private um so yeah, and there are some other inspectors that they don't know these things. They don't know that their own software does that. So it's a good opportunity if you are one of them to know, to get to know it now. So maybe a good question. Maybe a good question would be to ask uh, your, uh, your inspector, am I secure with you? Is my privacy secure? Am I still keeping everything private when I choose you. So keep that in mind. Um, I do see one question. I do, I see it. I will answer soon, uh, Tom. Um, now do me a favor. Write in the chat as well, or please let me know uh, verbally uh, if you enjoyed the webinar, if you learned something even if it was one thing new, that would be great. I would love that. Uh, some of you might agree and some of you might not agree with uh, with some things uh, that I said. But um, for inspectors, I hope that I said something that really worth uh, to consider it, uh, to use it in your business. For the realtors and agents that we have here, I hope that you can uh, read between the lines now of the report and uh, or understand the report better. For uh, the homeowners, buyers, sellers, I hope now that you understand how you can ask, what you can ask and how you can choose a good inspector. And I hope you will read the whole report and understand better now. <laughs> and, um, this might not be all uh, like uh, all written the same way from all the inspectors around USA again, but it's a good template to have for now. I would love to hear any questions. I think we have a few minutes to to answer, and uh, I like. All right. As I said, this is my first webinar, so I will try to take the to answer all the questions from the beginning that I see. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that you all got some good information here. Now, Tom, uh, Tom asks, which software do I use? Um, I'm not trying to sell anything. I I personally use Inspector Toolbelt. Um, Ian Robinson is the owner. And uh, one thing that I love about them is that even on a Sunday when I had a question that I had a problem, they solved it within literally 10 minutes. Their customer service is amazing. I don't know how they do it. And then uh, the privacy is important. And the great communication. I made my own template and honestly, I recommend them. But yeah, not trying to sell it. 
just answered the question. All right, I think uh, I appreciate uh, all the good comments. Do we have any other questions? All right. Well, if you if you don't have any other questions, uh, yeah, that would be it. You can feel free to to exit. <laughs> Thank you.